Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, today we have a question that came in to customer service. And this one comes to us from Randy Wolf, my buddy down in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, Randy says, Serge, he's titled it, Regripping the Club on My Backswing. Serge, I have developed a bad habit of occasionally regripping the golf club on my takeaway. I don't do it on every swing and most of the time it's with my irons. It's very frustrating as I can feel or sense, sense it when it occurs. The ball will go in either direction, left or right, 10 to 15 yards off my intended target depending on the face position of the club. I have to believe there are other Sergeites who have gone through similar struggles. Any suggestions? As always, thank you for your help. Best regards, Randy Wolf. Okay, regripping. Let's Let's define what it is. Is it nerves? Is it anxiety? Is it just a bad habit? It could be any one of them or all three. Regripping is basically, you know, doing this. Now the key is, is it's one thing that if you move your fingers, but it's another thing if you regrip and then you change. And as you regrip, you know, the club is moving in your hands. So let's say you take your grip up in the air now, okay? And I think this is what Randy's talking about because he actually happened to call me on this one. And, and, and I told him to start checking his club face out after, after impact and when he's hitting the pulls and everything else and, and the face was in a different position than when he, when he addressed it because he, he, he goes, he's very meticulous on, on his pre-swing pre routine and he checks his club face out and when he was getting finished they were closed most of the time. So you, get, you, can, you, you can do your club face right here, you get down the ground but it, you could be waggling it up here in the end in the air if you waggle like this and that, could, that can flip the club closed you don't even know what club's moving in your hand and next thing you know you're shut. And in and, and, and all the schools that I teach, I predominantly find when I do a grip check, I do a grip check now on every school student at the schools. And I walk in behind on the side of them over here and I reach down when they got the club and I reach up and I stand it up in the air like that and we look at the face. And I'm going to say <clears throat> on average, 95% of them have a shut club face. Okay, and if you have an offset club face, that makes it even worse. Because it'll be, if it's effectively more, more, more close, more shutter close. All right. So what I, what I, what I recommend for Randy is what's, was what I tell everybody. You, you have to get to a point where you don't, you don't keep regripping. Or sometimes you might have heard the expression "milking the club." All right. And so once, once I get, once I get up here and I'm, I'm walking in to get into, to, to go hit a golf ball. I put the club up in the air and I keep it up fairly high because I want it close to eye level when I check the, the leading edge or the scoring lines to the ground. Now once I set that club, I'm going to put my hands into what I call semi-lockdown. I'm going to squeeze both hands equally just like I was shaking hands with you know somebody with both hands. I'm going to squeeze them together and the fingers up into my, you know, and create about what I call about 50%, 60 max of my, of my what my final grip will be which is relatively firm and when I talk about lockdown what I mean is when I squeeze if you squeeze your hands like this you can see the muscles from here to there to just below your elbow from the wrist to your elbow are are, are working on uh, are really you can see them activating here all right now why do I want 50 or 60 percent well because watch I'm gonna come up in here I'm gonna set it now once I set it I never I never let the club go I try to maintain the exact same pressure if you start milking it Milking it is pretty much is pretty much just fooling around with your fingers. Regripping is when you kind of let the whole thing, you almost let the, the thumbs come off the hand and, and, and the club can slide in your hands. So once I set, once I go boom and I go into this lockdown from here to just below the elbows, I never I never let the, the hands come apart. But I'm only I'm gonna waggle three or four times. Like if this once I come in here and I get down to the ground, I'm getting everything set. I'm going to waggle three or four times and I'm going to come down and then and at, at some point I'm just going to bottom the club out. It might touch the ground, it might not, especially on a driver, it'll be at the ball and, and they're going to go. And as soon as I, as soon as I come to that, that dead stop, why do I want everything to go from the dead stop instead of forward pressing? Because zero, dead stop is zero, it's the same. That way, if I'm doing this, how do I know how much I'm, 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 I'm forward pressing my hands, how much my body might be moving. I want everything zero. That way it's the same every time. And if it's the same every time at dead stop, then I know exactly what muscles move, when, how, and, and how much. 
And so that's the way I think we start from a dead stop because zero is the same. It never changes. So therefore, it gives me a better chance of making sure I start my swing the same every way, every time. So I come down, and as soon as I do that, and I, and I bottom out and I come to that dead start for a nanosecond, the thing's going to happen. Boom. I'm going to go into full grip pressure what I want which would be which would be firming it up a little bit more to what I would call maybe 90% of equality of both hands same pressure from the fingers the palms up and through the forearm to right below the elbow you never reach the elbow because if you reach the elbow it tends to straighten out and that puts a lot of stress on the elbow so I'm gonna go boom I go to lockdown lock the hands a second that as soon as the hands go into lockdown and the forearms the knees go wide with that just enough outward pressure to hold me and the club starts back and all that happens quicker than one two three quicker than that so once I go here and I go into that, that modified lockdown, as I call it, because I want firm grip equal in both hands. None of this, the bottom hand is right for righty, left for lefty, is, is hold, is light on the golf club. Anybody ever swing basically one-handed like they did with the way they tell you to hold a golf club with a baseball bat or a tennis racket if you use it two hands? Come on. I mean... This club is this club's moving faster than all of those, and, and they want you to hold it and just swing with, and, and the right hand is just long for the ride, hold it like a baby bird, and many times they're saying keep them both light, but the, 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 the left one, the top one will be a little bit more firm than the bottom one. No, they're both exactly the same. There's a lot of physics that, that, that's involved with that. I'm not going to get into it now, but once I go down, everything stops, and I just go to that last locking, and boom, I'm gone, and I hit it. All right? So once you set your grip up here at about your... Your parcel time, and why do I do that? Because that that five, that four, five, or six seconds, and I always got to swing brood in ten seconds. Because if you make a practice swing, the psychologists say if you make a good practice swing and you want to swing that field, the swing starts fading away every second. All right, and so by ten seconds, it's pretty much gone. So you got to get that thing off, and 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 the better, the the less you do, short of reaching ten seconds, the better off you are. So I like to think in most cases I'm gone in about three or four seconds, and I'm gone. But that three or four seconds, if I set my grip pressure full bore up here, I'd already be into some, I'd already be fading into muscle fatigue by the time I start to swing. So at 40, 50%, no problem. I'm in it, and, and the second I set my grip, my swing is starting in a nanosecond from that. Once I set the knees and it starts. So therefore, there will be no fatigue happening in my arms by that point with any club. So get a good grip of things. And I guarantee you stop playing better golf. Equal grip pressure in both hands. Check that club face up. And if you're a regripper or if you're a milker, get rid of it if you want to play good golf. Because in many cases, you regrip or you, you milk it, you're going to be changing the club face. And if the club face isn't square anymore, ball starts in the direction the club face is aimed at the moment of impact. And if you've regripped it and milked it, open or close, it's going to be pretty tough to start the ball where you want it to go and therefore end up where you want it to end up. That's it for the search for today. And I'll be speaking with you all again soon.